ചെയ്യേണ്ടതായിരുന്നു അന്നേ മരിച്ചാൽ മതിയായിരുന്നു ഒരു പ്രൊവോക്കേഷൻ ഇല്ലാതെ അധികം ഫോഴ്സ് അങ്ങോട്ട് അയക്കാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല എന്തിനെങ്കിലും പേരിൽ ഒരു പരാതി അവിടെ നിന്ന് ലഭിക്കും ചന്ദ്രനെ ഞങ്ങൾ കൊന്നു ആറ് കഷ്ണമാക്കി കടലിലിട്ടു ഓക്കെ സോ വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വി ആർ ഹിയർ ടു ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് ന്യൂ ആമസോൺ പ്രൈം റിലീസ് സ്റ്റാറിംഗ് ഫഹദ് ഫാസിൽ ആൻഡ് ഹുവൽസ് ജോജു ജോർജ് നിമിഷ സജയൻ many others ensemble cast ensemble yeah uh, malik with uh, di- directed by uh, mahesh narayan uh, written by him also and uh, edited by him yeah so uh, yeah we have uh, rohit with us today joining as a guest uh, do you want to introduce yourself rohit well um, as said i am rohit i was also who are you i was also an mit student like uh, karthik said and i am sanjit bhai uh wow 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 right now like prepping for post grad so nothing much else yeah uh rohit is a film critic i think i don't know let's ask well, him <laughs> i have written like a few pieces i wouldn't call myself you know a, a pro at that to be honest yeah you've written for rediff yeah like two or three pieces as of now okay 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 So for for what films did you write? Like did you uh, write for them as like a guest type thing or yeah, did you work much, there as pretty much like oh, okay, yeah, okay, like okay, I okay. said only two or three pieces as of now. First one I wrote was for Thugs of Hindustan back then. Uh, oh, this is like 2018. Uh, yeah, second one yeah like there's a pretty large gap between each of these reviews. So okay, second okay, one okay, was okay. for Uri and the third one was for mm-hmm. uh, meel patthar milestone which uh, oh okay okay about netflix about 2 months back yeah yeah may 15 yeah. i think something like that yeah okay okay so uh, i mean yeah we can just get into the movie i guess um, the movie just released yesterday night at uh, 12 am or probably and, before uh, yeah. yeah a bit earlier than 12 true mm-hmm. i mean uh, okay i mean what did you guys think like initial thoughts about the film I uh, I don't know if it is inspired by any real real life story or something No no it's not uh, so I yeah that was like I was a little confused uh, if it's based on some personality or something because obviously throughout the film there are like uh, little little instances that you think maybe you know inspired by certain personalities I mean there's events that's like yeah. common but then not but, uh, also uh, based uh, on any individual person yeah, yeah so Malik, i actually haven't had malik himself uh-huh, ahead, isn't but... supposedly there uh, someone did mention that there might have been some figure in the 1980s who might have been similar to this person but okay. nothing conclusive but uh, there are you know theories that say that this was actually uh, inspired by a 2009 incident but uh the makers seek to distance themselves from that they want to okay, you know okay, yeah. uh, show this as a comp- completely fictional narrative okay mm-hmm. so i i just finished the movie before recording so i didn't really have like a lot of time to think about it as such so my my thoughts are more or less like i quite like the first half of it uh, quite a lot like i shouldn't divide it in general uh, but like, if i had to like really summarize like the first half was very you know very dynamic in its approach like it was going places and it was taking you as a viewer also to a lot of places uh, and you were like like i was enjoying quite a lot and uh, but it it had a lot of trappings of those very uh, you know similar crime epics in that sense uh, like a very uh, like a slightly melodramatic tone and a figure that you would like look up to so i mean it it had very you know uh, not like cliches but like something that has been done before and you're trying to put it and like try to package it probably in a different way so i mean those are like my initial thoughts but i quite liked it i didn't love it love it as such but maybe i would after like a day or two after like thinking about it a little more i think there are some like obvious references to you know popular uh, gangster films and like you know nayagan and godfather and uh, huh. all of that ha huh. uh but yeah i mean i also i i liked it i uh, i saw it last night hmm. and i think i had like the opposite reaction like i thought maybe the first 45 minutes i kind of struggled to get into it because it was like hmm. 
Okay. Right from the first shot, it was like a flurry of just lot of information being given. Like just from the right, right, s- right, right, single right. take, it starts off with it's like there's so many characters being mentioned, so many things like okay, this mm. person, this person's son, that is, blah blah blah. And I, I was mm. like struggling to keep up. And also, I was like thinking with the first shot itself, like why is this conceived as a single take? Like mm. if if so, I actually knew that this movie starts out with a single take uh, before uh, watching it. Ah, so. I, that's why I noticed it. I I thought if I didn't know, then I might not have noticed that it was a single take. Uh, and from then that point on, it just kept like you know bombarding us with like lot of information. Like oh, oh. this is this character, this is that character, this is what happens in this setting. Yeah. And I think it's only once it got to that point where uh, you know this takes place in many eras, mm. and uh, it starts out in the present time. it goes back to a flashback it is and then it goes to a period where you know fahad goes to the middle east and then comes back with the beard yeah, i thought yeah. it was only from that point that i really started to get into the story and the narrative i thought till then it was like a little muddled to be honest like but then overall i really mm-hmm. liked it we can get into the details later yeah, yeah. so if i can be honest about it uh, by now i've watched it twice and i still oh. uh, i still find the whole story kind of muddled to be honest and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Li- like sanjit bhai i did feel that it does borrow fairly you know rather liberally from a lot of movies that a uh, lot of gangster movies that we've always we've already watched and yeah. to to be fair you know a lot of those you know rather melodramatic conceits are uh, we can find them in this movie as well and mm-hmm. uh, and to be uh, if i have to you know to be honest about what i felt uh, as a constant uh, i think mahesh narayan thinks in terms of rather you know mainstream in- mainstream instincts so <coughs> and when you know a rather mainstream director uh, borrow such melodramatic conceits there are things that are lost you know and uh, okay. even as a writer i think uh, i think the dialogues are, i i found the plotting rather interesting you see uh, when when Uh, we see that the flashback is divided into three parts first part is by right 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 uh, ali's mother second by his sister in law and brother and the third part but the final part by him and there's also the part that there are uh, mm. uh, there are truths that each of them uh, omit there's something that uh, david doesn't say which suleiman says there are things that suleiman might not have said right. which david uh, right. does say in that sense mm. plotting wise i guess it's interesting but you know the dialogues i didn't feel uh, i found them to be a bit you know rather conventional especially in you know the first shot and if i have issues okay. with that you know first long take shot and there are two more i guess there's one in uh, yeah, there's I one set in the tsunami uh, that there's that sequence and there's one which uh, unfolds as part of the riots where uh, yeah 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 Ali runs to find his son, his dead son. Yeah, towards the end, yeah. And uh, if I can uh, elaborate about the first shot, if there is a problem with it, clearly, uh, I think here uh, Mahesh Narayan has also mentioned it that he wanted to do something inspired by you know the opening sequence of the Godfather, the wedding se- wedding you know sequence there. Oh. And, okay, okay, okay. And what he also wanted to do was establish the geography and such, and for that purpose. Hmm. he wanted to do it as a single take and he did mention that he stitched you know the whole thing problem is you can see it you can see those you know single shots that right individual right, right. shots that he intended to you know take and you can hmm. uh, you can see how he stitched it but you know in an ideal uh, in an ideal one uh, in an ideal long take uh, those things you know each of the rooms whatever is happening in each room would be kind of swimming into each other at least at at mm. an audio mm. sense you see uh, mm. i didn't feel that kind of you know dense uh, that kind of fluid thing i couldn't feel from this uh, one shot mm. but there are yeah yeah there are parts of the sequence which work uh, where mm. you know uh, nimisha and another henchman are looking down uh, and uh, we see dilish potens convoy coming those yeah. parts were rather fluid i felt even just mm-hmm. like you know there are some parts of it where just the focus is adjusted and then like the opposite the shot itself changes yeah, right, so i thought right. it was like well well executed but then i thought it was like little bit contrived considering like Correct. it's not 
it's not really doing much as a single take like it could have been just uh, uh, you know individual yeah. uh, shots or scenes but uh, okay i mean I the, think... the movie itself it's like uh, you know just to summarize like it's mm-hmm. a crime drama i guess uh, mm-hmm. it does you know have that gangster element to it but yeah. then you know it's uh, you know it has you know political elements mm-hmm. uh, religion all of that mm-hmm. and so like just thinking about like what are the obvious influences like the ones we Nayagan. mentioned is the the godfather nayagan yeah uh what else can you uh, think of anything well i can't pinpoint i thought nayagan was pretty specific to a lot of scenes and everything that mm-hmm. he was trying to do even with the central yeah. character uh, come mo- moral judgment that he was trying to put was also very inspired by velu nayakar's you know personality in some sense not every way mm-hmm. but I, I, i don't know about the influences but like what i initi- like right after the film ended i thought was so uh, around a month back i i watched this movie called uh, sardari begum uh, which is directed by sham benegar okay mm-hmm. so um, that is a I, it's it's not a straight up biopic of a personality but it's fairly inspired by a personality from the early 1900s not 1900s mm-hmm. like 1980s or something so it is based around a courtesan and everything but they're like fairly uh, like she dies uh, the character lead character dies in the beginning itself and the whole story of her life until that point is narrated by different different characters right mm-hmm. so obviously there is like a different set of truth to every other character about the lead character right mm-hmm. i thought for that film it's a different whole different context and everything but i think here uh, if you're trying to put out a character uh, inspired by let's say uh, velu naikar right you mm-hmm. can't sort of use that kind of structure in this i mean so uh, see if if you see nayagan that is a very different uh, narrative right like a very different very yeah. particular narrative to that right sort of vignette type also in a sense but it's not really mm. vignette it, it's uh, not exactly it, a flashback narration it's a uh, linear yeah, yeah, yeah. narrative in yeah. that sense linear yeah. narration yeah. right 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 but in this when you are going into someone else's perspective and everything you can't really flesh out certain characters properly so i mean there are like inherent problems in the narrative uh, itself like i'm li- like really nitpicking all these problems because i thought if it wasn't there i would have enjoyed the film a little more uh, especially with the certain few characters like uh, that uh, dilish potan's character uh, abu yeah. right i didn't sort of have a closure to his character at all in the end yeah and i didn't really know like what exactly. is the character about what are his like, motivations there, there was no kind of like you know uh, uh, what do you call it? like no window into his character exactly. at any point you, uh, exactly. i thought like they kind of rush yeah. through those parts point <laughs> is uh, he does get to be a politician he does get power but then he hmm. still seems to be uh, jealous in a sense of you know he seems to be right. jealous of sulaiman yeah, yeah, yeah. which is slightly intimidated yeah, also at and, some point uh, which is uh, if you want you can you know you know you can second guess in the sense that you know Uh, the true people's power might be in sulaiman's hands and he feels powerless in that sense mm-hmm. he feels he has no uh, he can't you know uh, get them at his command like sulaiman does maybe there is that sense to it but mm-hmm. still it's uh, rather fleshed out uh, it's not fleshed out enough yeah but mm-hmm. i di- i didn't even get to that point of thinking like what is the dynamic here because mm-hmm. like you never really think of those two characters although at the end it seems like okay this should have been a little bit more uh, you know yeah. fleshed out like properly yeah. because like if you see even some you know uh, there are other you know epic scale grand scale movies yeah. like uh, you know once upon a time in america yeah. right 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 you know like uh, uh, as th- this movie assassination of jesse james hmm. that is just like two characters and then it's like there's lot of stuff happening but then this thing remains like constant mm-hmm. throughout constant, and you yeah, can yeah. follow it throughout even with like comedy padam which is like you know a lot of people are saying this is similar to comedy padam i uh, i felt that they tried to do a similar thing but uh, yeah where she but uh, in, in that in that movie you can follow those two characters like dulkar and that ganga uh, ganga nayak and character <laughs> it's like they have a particular relationship mm. throughout they have like both of them have some kind of you know an yeah. arc like yeah. some uh, shifting character like right. all that but here i mean that uh, espe- like you can maybe follow it more with vinay fort and uh, fahad fasil but then not mm-hmm. so much with dilish potan and some yeah. of the others so uh, yeah. what i thought was it in a sense of you know motive wise malik might be closer to th- uh, kamati padam than you know a godfather or a nayagan in spite of the inspiration yeah. because yeah 
no that at, at heart <laughs> both godfather and nayagan are really immigrant stories while these are about uh, preserving your turf and uh, hmm. the thing about kamati padam is the uh, they get kicked out of you know their turf even though they tried hmm. to they were the ones who worked to preserve it they were the ones who worked to right yeah. right uh, develop it so to speak uh, not so much uh, it's for business motives as well and uh, hmm. in that sense uh, i think you know malik doesn't do as much uh, and another yeah. sense uh, another reason is when you think about it kamati padam has nested flashbacks you know there are like three four timelines going in parallel and even right, then right, right, right. kamati padam is still you know a film with more clarity than malik uh, definitely and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, another uh, thing that i i uh, noticed was you know in kamati padam and in another movie yobinda pustaka the, mm-hmm. the yeah. scene seem to breathe you know uh, uh, mm-hmm. not everything right, is in quote, right. uh, quotation marks as it is in uh, malik uh you know they seem to be living a life you know within the scenes you know they they yeah, yeah, they yeah. seem to have you know they there are scenes where just they just seem to be you know passing time they just yeah. seem to be you know whiling away which is not the sense in malik and that i guess is also you know uh an aspect where i felt it's more of a direction thing yeah. right like just from the direction itself it seems like here it's more okay dialogue dialogue yeah. dialogue dialogue okay mm-hmm. next scene this happens mm-hmm. dialogue 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 and that is whereas in comedy part of it's like you can see people just like walking on the street and mm-hmm. that's like a whole shot you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but here it's like that uh, apart from maybe that one kind of uh, godfather inspired sequence where you know that they're intercut between that funeral and that you know the violence taking yeah. place you know when uh, oh right 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 that apart from that scene which is you know completely silent i thought mm. that was probably the best scene in the best sequence in the movie because you can actually feel like okay what is going on and now okay because of this this is happening and it's like there's no dialogue at all yeah. and it got some like you know uh, breathing yeah. space definitely and yeah i think this is you know his signet is usual style mahesh narayan style especially when we look back to take off take off is also you know a movie where things seem to be happening fast short durations mm-hmm. are fairly uh, short durations are pretty short actually there's always action yeah. action action or dialogue 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 uh, mm-hmm. whereas you know uh, in say a comedy part of not everything they're doing is for narrative purposes they're living a life and uh things that are happening to them happen to be important to the narrative which is not what we get in malik everything is happening <laughs> for plot movement sake and definitely another ca- casualty of that approach might be uh, the performances because when you're going at you know such a quick pace <clears throat> uh, actors just can't you know be or behave i guess they are they are they are always facing yeah, yeah, pressure yeah. <clears throat> to indicate what they are feeling right <clears throat> but i i'm thinking of like the performances i thought like the main guys did a pretty good job actually like if you see uh fahad nimisha joju george uh vinay fort especially like i thought he did a really good job hmm. accent and, uh, aside yeah, i guess yeah. he was good mm-hmm. vinay fort is from fort kochi and in most movies of, of his uh, i guess he isn't able, he doesn't have to ditch that accent because most films are set in kochi but okay. here i just he, i just told uh, someone like the same thing like he's speaking tru, the, like the truandrum accent in the kochi yeah. style in oh, fact okay. i can pick up there, those there are times uh, when they seem to be switching in between three accents there's the yeah. truandrum accent the kochi accent and there's also you know the stereotypical muslim accent what what is considered oh, to I, be a stereotypical <coughs> muslim accent in malayalam movies You, you, I guess they might even the even like the even like the you know that uh, when they show coastal side movies and you know like fishermen yeah. in movies they have another accent there I thought that was also coming. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's the kind and, of accent they use in uh, Amaram Chandaputta, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought like Fahad Fasal kept kind of slipping in and out yeah. of that accent, like especially like you know they in the towards the end they come back to the original time like the current timeline. Yeah. and fahad is in that uh, jail uh, okay we are going to spoilers like go watch the movie and come okay, back yes. if you haven't seen it yeah yeah so and he's sitting in that jail and uh, you know uh, this guy comes uh, who comes there dilish potan dilish potan comes yeah. and he reveals that he has a gun, gun. right yeah 
and that is coming right after you know some of the uh, flashback scenes yeah. and mm. i thought like there was an accent slip up there like then he became like a little bit more uh, you know uh, that local accent like you know trivandrum and <laughs> yeah, all that yeah yeah but then in, in in when you know when he comes back from the gulf and all then that's like a different thing yeah. altogether i i don't know like that seems like something they should have taken care of yeah there are because, people uh, who did better yeah. uh, i don't mm. know where uh, the actress who plays uh, suleiman's sister divya prabha she mm. i think she did well for the most part uh, so at some instances uh, nimisha did fairly well i guess and mm-hmm. a lot of the actors who are from trivandrum i guess they must have done well there is a uh, Indran who plays uh, the police officer. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sharath Apani for whatever little time he he is there, and you know, hmm. some of the police officers. Rajesh Sharma was also a police officer in there, and he's from Kollam, which is fairly similar to to Trivandrum, I guess. Close okay. by, yeah. Yeah. I mean, see, even these even, are the details even this guy, uh, of... uh, you know, that guy who these people kill, like uh, I don't know his name. Uh, the guy who played Chandran. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so even even he's like you know he's got that uh, local trivandrum maxen like he yeah. was in a lot of this uh, sanal kumar shashidhar and oh. movies like oh. so is seen, it uh, is it uh, is it a right thing to have a trivandrum maxen for that film or no no it's like it has to be consistent no like uh, Achha, no i mean so it's inconsistent all throughout for every character right yeah i mean if you see like vinay fort it's like a very obvious kind of thing like he's speaking in like that uh, kochi style but then yeah. you mm-hmm. know the words are you know from the trivandrum uh, slang okay okay yeah. okay but in but general i i think uh, this film was meant generally for a theater experience right mm. so yeah. obviously that that whole effect that all of us might have been expecting at some point can't be translated on your laptop at any point like in no way mm. i i think it it will be like justified to you know think of this film as like a probably like watching it on your laptop Uh, I mean I like, don't know if they did some adjustments like considering the sound their... was pretty good though like uh, that sequence where the, during that riots where Fahad Fazal is running in that single take yeah those gunshots oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. were really good like I could really feel it on my in my headphones like at the highest mm-hmm. quality uh, that is possible I thought yeah. all yeah, of yeah. that part was like fairly well done and everything even the background score is like soaring at times like becoming like too good like Like you get that point, right? Like it becomes like too huge and magnanimous in its yeah. approach thing. I had an issue but, with the BGM too, but uh, that's a constant through you know all three of uh, my Snarin and films where you always have you know something in the background indicating what you ought to. Yeah, feel. indicating the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if it's a sad scene, it's like uh, violin music. Yeah. See, you soon to had like un- was underscored all throughout, right? Or was yeah. it not? Yeah. But to be fair, like maybe uh, he had to. I guess in that case you can you know forgive him yeah, for that bad just, to, just yeah. to you know uh, keep our focus I guess yeah 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 but otherwise like I I like since I can't pick out all those uh, accent problems and yeah, everything I yeah. thought this was more like a walk like a cake walk role for Fahad Fazal he didn't have to do like like it was effortless to a point like I didn't think he 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 had to probably like put in he didn't have to like probably put in a lot of effort into his performances in this performances particular. Hey, what do you think? Well, uh, I don't think it's one of his best, but yeah, uh, yeah, there I, are, I don't there think are, so. But it was like, like he was just like an auto autopilot yeah. type thing. Hmm. And and uh, like the some of those older portions, it's like, I mean, I think even he said it's like you know he's taken um, Kamal Hassan and Nayak and as an inspiration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can actually see you can actually compare the two. I mean. uh even that character goes through that whole age arc and uh, you know hmm. in the end he ends up with this kind of age makeup and actually nayagan was like known for that like he it was known for having like a very good uh, uh makeup hmm, for hmm, the hmm. main character like yeah. the, kamal hasan did it portion. by himself uh, apparently yeah yeah so and uh, i think i don't think this compares to that like i didn't no way really believe like he was old to be honest Uh, actually, I think the best performance from Fahad Fazal was during that middle portion, like when he was, uh, you know, when he had the beard, basically. Yeah, uh, basically, uh, yeah. if I can speak. When he was looking notes, like himself. Yeah. Yeah. If I can speak of the uh, genuine notes that he hit, uh, they are during you know those confrontational sequences, those you know the mm-hmm. argu- argument scenes, or you know mm-hmm, when his yeah. son dies, 
I think yeah, both, sun dies. both Fahad and Nimisha did well in that moment. Hmm. So yeah. I, I think they did well. I thought I thought like just that moment it was very, it was probably very tough for him. Yeah, like because he had to go through the whole single take and then and react then to react. the sun. Like, exactly. I mean that's yeah. like a, that was like a really good moment for him. But I mean that, that is good. That, but yeah. No, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that take, I think it was stitched a bit. You know, I guess there are. I yeah, yeah, did yeah. Find Two, three times. Some obvious, you know, match cuts yeah, yeah, in there. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, to give credit to him, he he did well there. Yeah, in yeah. general like i didn't feel that his child's death and that whole thing was earned really well like mm. i thought like you have to have a very personal kind of loss for in in this kind of a narrative uh, yeah. just to get some like some emotions from that character or like some you know uh, what do you call that some arc so i thought yeah. that this this part wasn't like well properly earned or like we didn't it didn't lead up to that part really well Bro. that is that is what i told na like it has that inherent problem in the yeah. narrative in, while in the screenplay itself so you can't really uh, question anything else beyond like the screenplay because yeah. i thought it like i didn't feel ki that part could have mm. come at this point yeah yeah i mean i felt that like throughout at small small places like you know when uh, that um, uh, school gets bombed yeah. and then you have like that scene where it's like it's immediately after that and there's a row of those dead bodies you know wrapped and Uh, uh-huh. kept there and then there's the like the family of those children cry yeah 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 and you know father is standing there i thought like maybe he could he might have reacted more in that moment like i thought maybe that could have like been tweaked or something like it didn't mm. feel like that if that had happened in real life that would be this character's reaction because i don't think he was like evil or anything at that point to be like cold and staring mm-hmm. just like that yeah i thought even Mo- he would have been like shook more you know yeah, by yeah, that whole yeah. it's it like wasn't motivated yeah, yeah 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 that's what i thought as well like exactly like there were like certain very very small small things that i thought like didn't uh, like they weren't as motivated as sh- as they should have been for for a certain yeah. type of reaction from fourth person but it's i think it's okay like people wouldn't even like notice all of these things maybe which which is the godfather shot that uh, the opening shot was uh, inspired by i mean uh, is it the, the f- first long like on that guy who comes to uh brando is it that or after well, that like the wedding part? i mean you know in concept the whole wedding sequence is about you know okay okay there's yeah. the wedding mm. taking place outside but uh, don vito is okay. still working uh, mm-hmm. so right right, right. mahesh narayan i guess he so he wanted to stitch that whole thing so mm. uh, Ma- ali is working and at the same time you know he is giving his farewell to everyone as he goes for his hajj pilgrimage mm. Mm-hmm. Actually, the one one that it more uh, kind of resembles, I think, is uh, if you see in the opening shot of Boogie Nights. Yeah. Ah, right, right, like right. It's like it starts on this one thing. It goes through like a, a street into a party, like a club, yeah. and then mm-hmm. it goes and introduces literally all the main characters. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. see, like, uh, and you can actually compare the two. I mean, even in uh, uh, this guy's next movie, uh, Magnolia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there is an introductory sequence where, but that's not a single take. It's like a montage. That's a montage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but in this single take, you can actually, it's you can actually see how skillfully it's done when you compare it to this one. Yeah. yeah. Because in that you actually remember like a lot of the characters. It's like you follow these two people into a club, mm-hmm. and then you come back to them later. But then you know what their character is like just from like two lines they say or something, mm-hmm. and it ends with like two of the main characters, like Burt Reynolds and uh, the other guy, mm-hmm. uh, Mark, Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. <clears throat> them staring at each other. It's like yeah. uh, it's like. that sets up the whole thing even better i thought this was like you know it could have been you know multiple shots and it would have worked still the yeah. same i guess mm-hmm. and i think even for the right sequence uh hmm. the whole uh, single shot thing was i thought it was a bit emotionally distancing R- hmm. rather than hmm. feel for his, this father whose son has died you you can hmm. only see this guy who's trying to dodge bullets and i think you know yeah, yeah. with mm mm-hmm. uh, with cuts in between they might have been able to enhance that emotion yeah yeah i mean I, th- like even when that scene begins right like he's praying at mosque and you have no sense of geography for why that action is taking place there yeah like you you don't get s- the right kind of information that you should have like why is his kid uh, playing at the beach at this point why true, is he not true, at the mosque exactly yeah right 
So I mean all also of, also we don't really see the kid right before that you, like you I don't, don't remember the kid's face also No yeah. he was there in one sequence where you know he's uh, where he's with Fahad Fazal and uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. go to that coast wala thing yeah. where they're like building something up and then he's like you can't do that and But then th- there's back. no like real attachment to the kid as a right. character right, right right I mean right. not that there has to be I mean I'm saying even if there was one scene before that where you kind of get to see the kid character baby like you know get established yeah. I mm-hmm. think this would have affected somebody watching even more hmm true so i mean th- that's what i was telling before also like th- like all these details have gone like missing all throughout the yeah. i don't know if it's a screenplay problem or if it was like while he was like shooting he didn't pay attention to that i can't really like pinpoint i but mean then, look like just screenplay wise i do i think okay these might be flaws but then i think it's kind of uh, you know uh, going into the details I think overall I think the screenplay did a good job. I mean he took like some uh, he took like a setting, you know, some character there and he kind of had this archetype that previously existed with like Nayak and Godfather and all mm-hmm. that. And I think he did a pretty job of fitting that into it. But then you know just the just the kind of storytelling clarity right. maybe could have been I mean uh, if that uh, intent was better. what you just said if it was that then it's fine. Then I think that then that then it's a success in that sense. I mean I'm saying based on just one interview I saw he was talking okay. about like Coppola and all I he, I don't think oh. he mentioned Godfather but then you know if he's mentioning Coppola and there's these I mean there's I I saw like three scenes inspired by the Godfather there's like you know that cut between the funeral and uh, right. the violence yeah. that's taking place hmm. then there's this uh, scene where the kid is being baptized and you know that yeah. is cut hmm. between yeah. his, uh, intercut between something else court thing, and uh, and one more scene i don't uh, remember which one exactly but yeah now that you said the even yeah. the opening take is kind of like so, you know that style when you think about it uh, in that sequence where uh, fahad son is being baptized uh, mm. mm. vina is actually his godfather when you think about right. when you think yeah, about yeah, yeah, it, yeah. he's the one holding yeah. him and later mm. vina fort is the one who plots to kill the son uh, so, maybe oh, that yeah, yeah. also something they could have nailed further and does also you know that uh, the uh, uh, in what you might have called an interval se- pre interval sequence if it was in theaters the part where uh, uh, fahad uh, ali kills chandra it's inspired by the second godfather you know uh, the one oh, yeah, yeah the rooftop da- scene Dr. right that's the that's the sequence which inspired it all right yeah i thought the interval point was where his uh, mother tells that kid freddy k you can't kill that uh, you can't yeah. kill ali as it i thought that was like a more interval yeah. type but, but anyway th- that doesn't matter uh, that that's the point where you know fahad becomes you know an outright criminal without doubt hmm. when you talk of it uh, you know whatever he did till that point may not have been wrong you know may not have been sinful so to speak yeah, i'm not probably. sure how that aligns with you know uh, his religion but it might not be a particularly wrong thing to do so even in the context of you know bima palli if uh, i guess uh, kartik chatter might be able to uh, tell you more about this but bima palli was actually known for that gray market you know uh, for that smuggled goods market oh so uh, that's like you know similar like coastal area i guess and yeah. you know a lot of things are smuggled in from the gulf including like you know popularly at one period all these dvds and cds mm-hmm. of movies were sold there for like yeah. you know see before like pirate bay and all was a thing yeah. <laughs> that was the and yeah. if you want to think of it that might be a response to government policy because back then you know uh, we were mm. not a liberal economy so if you uh, if you want you can think it of you know, think of it as you know free enterprise private enterprise you know things that mm. needn't be uh, needn't be wrong but okay by by after by that moment where he kills chandra by by then he mm. has become a criminal yeah 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 and uh, i actually I'm, had a problem with it because uh, the uh, logic with the felucci sequences uh, it's fairly crowded there in new york in that parade and the mm-hmm. only time felucci might be alone is at home which is why and he can uh, we too can uh, go through you know the roadway so he has to hop to hop buildings in between buildings and uh, go yeah. to fenuchi's building here yeah. it is half realized that logic so to speak which is that uh, he can uh, men can go through hmm. uh, the uh, place where uh, 
uh, women are actually you know cooking that prasad thing it it's oh. uh, it is said during that atugal pongal i think right is it like i didn't notice that i i did see you know uh, b- uh, you know posters of atugal amman stuff I, i'm not entirely okay, sure okay okay Okay. Oh, okay. then I thought that that would have been good if I didn't even notice that. Like, and so basically, this is a festival which takes place where you know, like women are on the streets basically. Yeah. All the women come on the streets and you know make that. Uh, and it's Prasad fairly crowded. Okay. And okay, I okay, think okay. Uh, so- someone also blogs Vinay for saying that uh, men can't be going through this way. Only women are allowed. Right. And that's right, also right, right. the point that you know uh, they are non-Hindus and they might be. Uh, Uh, they might be uh, withheld for the same reason but the point is he needn't have uh, uh, we are not entirely sure if uh, ali needed to you know climb those roofs to get to chandra he, he could he have just, just walked through the other side he might have walked through the other side yeah uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. when when the inner logic is not entirely satisfied just making a reference is not worth it in my opinion exactly right 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 and this is a problem which i had with uh, jagame tandaram as well which is also a gangster movie uh, which is inspired by yeah. a whole lot of gangster movies there's yeah, both yeah, yeah. godfathers so even their jojo character is called a godfather for sri lankan tamils and there is yeah. also a window shooting uh, inspired by the godfather uh, the second godfather and Mm-hmm. If you want to think about it, the climax was inspired by both Scarface and Inglorious Bastards. So that's the that whole Scarface climax, which is referenced here as well. But they just seem to be references for the sake of it. Which mm-hmm. which which Scarface reference was in this film? So basically, the Scarface climax, you know, right? Where you yeah, know yeah, all yeah. these people are the marching, whole shooting. In, uh-huh. uh, marching in to kill uh, Tony Montana. Pretty much the same sequence to kill the villain here in uh, Jagame Tandiram, but he isn't oh. killed, and uh, he right, right, he right, brings huh. in a very big gun. Big gun, but it's the opposite thing that is happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like the same thing is there in uh, Bombay Velvet also, right? Same. Yeah, yeah. Bombay Velvet also had like a very similar. I don't know what Bombay Velvet, but yeah, he brings a Tommy gun and does does shit apparently. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah, that's fair. Pretty much uh, my thoughts are like I don't have a lot of thoughts on this film. <laughs> I. Like first of all, I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. The other thing yeah. is, I I didn't like it that much. Also, that like I'll have like a lot to talk about. Like certain, I like if I had to really point, if what I subjectively didn't like was the first opening single take. To be honest, like I thought it was like super gimmicky. In this is just my subjective opinion about it. Like objectively, obviously there is like a lot of details that you're getting, and like ten other things, and like there are like. many other things which i thought could have not been done also and it could have like made its way through yeah. through that scene like i think just in that in essence sums up like what is what can be the faults of the movie like you know yeah. having stuff just for the sake of it rather than you know earning <laughs> something you know like just yeah. the, just like we talked about the roof thing yeah it's like the same problem throughout it's like some things aren't earned enough Definitely, when that yeah. adaptation is taking place you know to this uh, setting and so on mm mm-hmm. mm But I thought, like you know, like the broader stuff, like broader stroke stuff, was done pretty well. Like, yeah, yeah, can, yeah, definitely. You can yeah, enjoy watching it. Like I didn't think it was like a bad movie at first. No, no, yeah. no way. It's it's not a bad film or anything. Yeah. I don't think it's a terrible movie, you know, in that sense. But uh, I mean, yeah, he, it for sure, yeah. Uh, like he mentioned, there is a certain thrust uh, of you know, even especially you know, the conspiracy parts in uh, with the whole political conspiracy uh, thing. Which, mm-hmm. If you want to talk about it, that kind of thing is also part of you know a very unrealistic film like Lucifer. But there is a certain thrust happening, you know, the, mm-hmm. a very pulpy sort of thing, which is interesting if not you know good. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, uh, yeah, even if right. even if I want to talk about the political aspects, I guess uh, there are people on Facebook complaining that you know. For one, uh, in the actual Bhimapalli firing, uh, the pla- uh, the names of the, the of the places have been changed. So, okay, this place is actually called Bhimapalli, and there was a firing that happened in two thousand nine, and you know they they have made they have made changes to the timeline. So, what they mention is in the actual Bhimapalli firing, there was no counter firing, which apparently happened in the movie, which happened in the movie, I guess. And oh. the problem is, uh, the movie kind of fully puts blame on the police and. they are like oh the hmm. state is responsible but they don't they don't clearly you know mention names and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when a 
film claims to be a political thriller and when it makes such you know compromises by now it's kind of it's not exactly uh, it's uh, it feels kind of like cowardice in a sense and yeah i mean it's like uh, the, even that uh, you know i felt like uh, let's not get too much into it but then mm-hmm. like even that religious conflict stuff they thought like we can like in the screenplay it seems like they're completely avoiding it like there's no religious yeah, conflict yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. like a humane yeah. issue that <laughs> started off with yeah. but then you know in re- reality it's like more practical like that yeah, yeah. but exists. i think yeah. th- then then it's not the intent also right k they want to yeah, get I mean, into those this conflicts is like, i mean w- i don't know what the point of this is it's like you know it's there is a larger than life thing happening and also yeah. this thing so yeah. i mean I if you see nayakan and uh godfather i mean that's like a pulp element to it as well definitely yeah. definitely yeah 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 but then Go- uh, godfather yeah. started as a pulp novel so yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but then uh, would you like the like what are your closing thoughts uh, on the film would you well, recommend it uh, well i you know uh, you should watch any film that you want to i wouldn't you know recommend one <laughs> film over the other i'd actually uh-huh. you know uh, i'm the kind of person who thinks that even watching bad films or even in- incompetently made films can be interesting like hmm, you just definitely. need to be in the right frame of mind and definitely I, yeah and when you think about it watching bad films is also the kind of reason uh, we have a tarantino you know yeah, yeah, yeah. S- someone who can you know think around bad films you know think of it in a play- uh, think of it in a playful sense and i think I that mean, kind even, of thing even even like scorsese yeah like yeah. even yeah. karthik that is like, also my reason for watching bad films that you complain about <laughs> Which film? <laughs> like any bad movies that I go to theater to watch. <laughs> Bro, I don't think uh, Race Four qualifies. First of all, I didn't watch Race Three in theater. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think you, you, you saw much worse. You can have fun with these films, I guess. No. You can be, yeah. you can be the guy who you know makes quips, you know, while they say very <laughs> corny stuff. I, I guess that's a very legitimate way to enjoy movies. Yeah. But would I mean in general this, would you yeah. like what are your closing thoughts on the film like yeah. what would you how would you sum it up Yeah I don't think I'll recommend like to anybody I mean you know I think the people who are interested in like fast fast and all they probably you know mm-hmm. will see it anyway Yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean to a to somebody who's you know unsuspecting like maybe I'll recommend with some reservations like about you know the first hour or so Mhm but uh, I think yeah I mean mm, Yeah I don't have much to say actually. Yeah. Like this is pretty much it like it's it's not like you know if it's like comedy bottom I would recommend like Definitely. four hearted yeah, like this. Comedy bottom is my on is one of my all time favorite films in in my top 50 if I have to. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. So okay like uh, if you've seen pretty much most Malayalam films this year or what? Not really but yeah. But like three films that you'd like to recommend in in in, in a sense from this year itself. Well there's joji of course uh, mm-hmm. and uh, okay three movies i am not sure if i've even watched three to be honest uh, <laughs> i quite like dark aryam to be honest okay yeah dark aryam was also a fine movie and there's of course joji and joji was a movie that i actually really liked by the time i watched it for the third time i guess okay which is when and i guess uh, i even uh, in that sense what dilish potan and uh, Mr Sham Puskaran said it was right uh, it's the kind of movie that might have worked especially well when you watch it at home in your you know personal screen you can okay. you know very uh, uh, you can really observe you know the really minute details like you you can uh, see all the foreshadowing and the echoes not foreshadowing per mm. se but how you know intricately the realities in the movie are connected to each other and in in the in the movie itself there is a scene with uh, like this guy is w- somebody is watching tv and there's a sherlock episode and yeah. it's like foreshadowing like you know the pill being uh, okay spoilers but yeah. uh, something in the movie and i thought like the movie itself like unfolded like uh, some of those sherlock episodes like you know in sherlock there's like you know foreshadowing and some yeah. you know intricate details that pay off later So I think like on rewatching that movie I think that's what comes into you. Yeah, I, I even while she's uh, while the lady Macbeth character I don't remember her name. Binchy. While she's like scrolling through Facebook she's got yeah. all those uh, pregnancy ka ads and everything which I noticed quite late but yeah. I mean what so there are details in that film. 
I think it's not pregnancy test ads oh, like okay. there are yeah, some yeah, surrogacy correct. ads or something like that. So and yeah, I mean there are details little, in Joji. There's very little exposition in Joji, and this is how you pick details in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Joji was like supremely well done. Like yeah. even as like an individual film and everything else, yeah. like it was like super well done. But otherwise, what else did I watch from Malayalam this year? Nayata. Nayata, I watched, which was good. I mean, again, very similar to like my reaction was my reaction yeah. was very similar to what I had with Ma- Malik. Malik. Um, Nayata, I watched. I, yeah. Sorry. Kala also, which I personally didn't like so much, and uh, I I watched Operation Java. this year yeah operation java was interesting in a sense you know interesting come, yeah yeah but uh, i i guess in all of these films there are things that i thought could have been better <laughs> yeah and uh, when it comes to Probably. both nayata and kabir uh, and uh, malik uh, i hmm. feel you know the whole you know the state does everything this uh, which is okay true to some extent but it's a rather easy answer to get to when you want to explain isn't that like things. you know taking from like older malayalam movies like if you see the 2000s movies and all the yeah. rare few which talked about politics and all yeah. mm-hmm. it's like you know all all it'll be some narrative like all politicians are corrupt or the government yeah. is making uh, uh, you know taking advantage of the minorities yeah. whatever mm-hmm. every, like, you know like a very black and white type. movie ever every cinevasan movie ever you could say in a sense <laughs> yeah I mean, you okay. know, th- those are like you know meant to be uh, comedy's f- first priority. Yeah. But then I'm saying even if it's like you know some political movie, which is you know rare, but then you know where, even when they did happen, it was like mm. the same like black and white narrative. Okay, yeah. what this this thing is responsible. Mm. Uh, but think talk about this thing, Nayata. I thought that movie was like much more cinematic than this than Malik. Like I thought that yeah, was yeah, you know just the sure. conception of it, like the cinematography and sound. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was like a very immersive experience. Like I, I wish I this you, movie had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even this was that was shot by Shaiju Khalid, right? If I'm not wrong, who shot Joji as well. Yeah. 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 Correct. Both had like very similar aspect ratios and everything. That also. I mean, Night Two was very interesting and in, in a way in a also, sense. Yeah. Arkaryam Arkaryam was also interesting in that sense you know as a if i i, I actually quite like arkaryam more than most malayalam films that i've seen this year purely because of like like i can't say like i don't know if i should say it like because i think it will be like a spoiler in a sense but like the nothingness no, also yeah. was like very we interesting there are controversial statements today so <laughs> i guess one uh, more it should all be cut out yeah it will okay, be a yeah. 20 minute episode in the end oh. <laughs> So anyway, I mean, I, I mean, I thought Malik was quite okay, uh, quite decent. Uh, I liked it, but I didn't love it so much. But I think you can watch uh, Malik purely because of the, you know, the grand scale of it. Yeah, if you exactly. Want to enjoy that part, and if you want to watch the kind of films where you where you have this one hero that everyone in that community worships too, in a sense. So I think for people yeah. who are looking to watch that kind of films, for them it serves fairly well, uh, in a way. Yeah, I mean. Those are my closing thoughts. Yeah, e- even in in the sense, even as an unsuccessful film, I guess it could be the reason why be- more better films of such uh, such a uh, scale type, uh, of such scale or type can be. Yeah, made. yeah. I hope yeah, yeah. Uh, in that sense it should be an inspiration for filmmakers. Uh, there are people who are already calling it a classic and stuff, and I certainly wouldn't agree with that, even though. it is their opinion and they are entitled to that but yeah it i think <laughs> like i said bad films good films and bad films can be helpful in that sense mostly yeah cha watch all films yes <laughs> but watch mostly sanjeet short films yeah 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 youtube or or karthik Smo- smooth plug in to be honest yeah <laughs> yeah my short film is now on mx player okay so you oh, can yeah. watch oh, that oh yeah yes. it's all, already plugged uh so um should we wrap it up yeah yeah wrap, wrap okay. it up anything else you want to ask uh, rohit you want to ask something no no i've asked <laughs> no i don't have anything to ask fine i think rohit can join us back you know for some future episodes yeah 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 so i'd be happy to this, this was real fun i must say yeah so <laughs> yeah i mean just uh, follow us on uh, spotify guys if you haven't already to yeah. uh, get the latest episodes and also on instagram so yeah see you next time we'll talk about something else uh yeah, anything else no thank you bye bye khatam
Mike, that's impossible. They'll turn him over directly to the Internal Revenue, Customs, and half the FBI. It's not impossible. Nothing's impossible. It would be like trying to kill the president. There's no way we can get to him. Tom, you know you surprised me. If anything in this life is certain, if history's taught us anything, it says you can kill anyone. 